been a pleasure and welcome to Ellen TV News Live, telling many in Southern Trust and Developments from Liberia, Africa, and the rest of the world. I'm your uncle, Maxwell Johnson, presenting this March 21st, the year in May 2019. Story top Ellen TV News Live this morning, President George Manawia addressed the commitments for development from the United Arab Emirates. Government Liberia announces the arrival of equipment for the installation of a new Timbo River bridge connecting river sets to three other counties in the southeast. University of Liberia and Echo Bank Liberia signed an agreement to extend loan to full time employees of the UL Faculty Association. Another home front, Nigeria's Minister of Education warns that parents who refuse to send their children to school will be prosecuted. The story plus more coming up on this edition of Ellen TV News Live. Please keep watching. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you the four stories. TV News Live would not take our first story. Like leaders of the United Arab Emirates have set up a technical working group to travel to Liberia for assessment and to, and to finalize arrangements for immediate direct investment. The technical working group of the UAE comprises civil engineers, agriculture experts, and other technocrats. An executive manager really says the constitution of the technical working group followed a meeting between President George Manewia and delegation and the Crown Prince and other UAE officials. Briefing his UAE hosts at the meeting, President Wea unveiled the government's pro poor agenda for prosperity and development. President Wea said the plan is aimed at lifting Liberians out of poverty and improving their livelihood. The Liberian leader named rural connectivity, including a coastal highway, agriculture, the revamping of the Liberia Electricity Corporation, the LEC, renewable energy, health, and education as top priorities of the first term of his administration. At the same time, the Crown Prince of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Ad Nayan, has promised to work along with President George Manawia to achieve his development plan for Liberia. The Crown Prince said Liberia is important to the UAE assuring of a better relations with the country. According to an executive margin release, the assurances were made during the meeting between the UAE Crown Prince and President Wea in Abu Dhabi. The Crown Prince hailed President Wea's visit and hoped it would strengthen ties between the UAE and Liberia, as well as open new avenues for bilateral cooperation in the interest of the two countries. In remarks, the, state, the Minister of State of the UAE said his government and people take special delight in helping President Wea achieve his development goals for Liberia. President George Mane Wea is accompanied on the trip by Representative Edwin Mervyn Snow, Ministers Bezan Garfinde, Eugene Nangwe, Dania Ziaka, and Trokong Pue. Public Works Minister the Public Works Ministry says equipment for the installation of the new Timbo River Bridge in Rosas County is in country. The bridge, according to engineers, has lived its usefulness and now appears to be a death trap for the people in the area. The situation has also far affected a tractor rather the prompt attention of the government through the Public Works Ministry. According to Assistant Public Works Minister for Planning and Programming, James Reynolds, currently the detailed work by engineers is at the verge of completion. He said the completion of the detour will subsequently pave the way for the commencement of the new bridge 
project soon. He spoke in an LNTV interview. They completed the, they completed the center pier for that bridge. And um, we realized that going into the rainy season, the bridge is delaunched. That bridge serves as a major corridor you know, for residents in the area and even for conduit. People transmitting um, hospital supplies, you know, logistics and all. You know, it's a livelihood and it cannot just be completely you know, discontinued for an extensive period of time. So we had a meeting with the contractor and we agreed that we do a temporary bypass while the the village bridge is delaunched and a new bridge is launched to replace that. I also just want to emphasize that mm -hmm. the new bridge that is needed to be installed is already in country. We've had a new bridge in country for some time and, uh, and the contractor is quite prepared to do the delaunching and the relaunching of the new bridge. So we are currently on course of constructing the depot. You know, within a week or two we expect that that detour will be, you know, will be started and probably within three weeks from now will be completed. You know, after that, and then we we'll move forward to doing the launching and the relaunching of the bridge. So that's that's currently our approach, and you know, things are on course with that. I understand the team even went on Saturday, uh, this one Saturday, to visit the site and determine, you know, particularly looking at the water, the water levels, and see how we can start the. the at the same time, the Ministry of Public Works is said to be monitoring the performance of drainage system on recently constructed roads in Monserrado County. Speaking in an ELBC interview Wednesday, the Assistant Minister at the Public Works Ministry, James Renner, also said they have identified serious challenges in waterways, mainly along the Doe Community Road, which is at the result of the wetland situation in the area. However, Mr. Raymond Reynolds added that they are working on technical modalities to observe the situation during the rainy season to ensure a perfect solution can be reached soon. Um, these issues have been raised and we are conversing on these issues. Um, the minister, a uh, couple of weeks ago, paid a visit to the Doe Community Road. Uh, some of the residents of the area raised those issues. We raised our own concerns with the contractor. Um, the technical team at the ministry agreed that it would be useful for us to observe the performance of the journey. I mean, this is the first major rainy season that yeah. the road is about to experience. And so, I mean, some more conclusions can be drawn from there. As you know, the whole community is a wetland area, you know, and so there are serious challenges in terms of discharge. The, the seawater is somewhere, or this rather we run the seawater, the, the river side is somewhere, um, I think 10 or 20 meters away from the Paris and Fields area that you are describing. You know, so you can imagine that most of the people in the periphery of that area will be in the sort of uh, the muff of the, the river. You know, so we are aware of this and we went there to observe it. We decided on some ways to, to mitigate the, the problems as well as ensuring that um, as it performs during the rainy season, it gives us a better understanding of what we needed to do. You know, so those things have been certainly considered. The consultant also. Uh, and based on recommendations, then we, we can improve the you know, drainage performance. And so we are looking at it. Meanwhile, Mr. Reynolds said massive progress is in the making for the government to execute the chip sealing rules in some parts of the country. What we do with chip sealing is, um, is a law, we construct a pavement, we pave these roads, we do the, the surveys and put in some um, crush aggregates and then pave the roads, but we don't, we don't use the normal asphalt. Okay. It's a mixture of chipping or crush rock and bitumen that we use to seal the top of the road rather than the usual asphalt. And that allows for a lower cost of construction and also is very effective in terms of, you know, of areas where there are lower traffic volumes. So we, the government started to look at these things in, in, for non-primary roads. Primary roads are uh, those that connect our main county capital and they have higher traffic volumes. So what was the last, uh, last trend of Yes, um, the test results that come in so far and um, the information we know, I mean, JSU is not new to, to engineers, it's something that's been done in, in Ghana, in Angola, in so many other countries in the U.S. as well. And, uh, and um, the road normally goes, the average lifespan of the road is between 10 to 15 years, you know, and usually maintenance is done after about 6 to 7 years, especially when it's done properly. The most effective thing about 
Sign the country lawmaker Jay Nangus Law is calling on Liberians to be patient as President George Manawia will need time to develop the country. According to Representative Law, criticism of the government is good, but giving the president space to work is quite important. He made the disclosure in an LNTV interview. What I'm doing is be realistic. People say, well, look at next to Sierra Leone. They may do this, they may do the other one, this one, that one. Look at the system that he, he inherited. This, this world will not disappear now. Look at the, the economy of, of Sierra Leone. Was it in shambles when this man took over? Compare that to our situation. There are certain ships that may be smooth sailing. When you change captain, nobody knows because the ship is, is still going. Mm. There are other ships that change captain during turbulence and the turbulence will go for some time before the new captain really finds his bearings uh, i'm not finding excuses for the government there are some decisions and some actions that mean improvement yes i agree but again that comes with the terrain of 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 uh, inexperience okay all of us we learn on the job and president job is what Everybody, all around the world, relying on it. Look at what President Trump of the great United States is going through. I mean, I think he had more difficulties. If you supply the economy, he has more political troubles than, than, than we have here or than any other African country, you know, has. But it all comes with the terrain. Maybe if Trump gets a second term, or even the, the last two years in his first term, he may pick up. All right? There are certain things that can make you to calm down. When you get there, you think you have it all and know it all and all of that, and say, okay, situations can make you to settle in. So, Meanwhile, the Director General of the Library Extractive Industry and Transparency Initiative, Gabriel Nikon, says, was on George Manor, we are remains committed to addressing the economic hardship in the country. Because we are convinced and convicted that President George Manawiya intends to address the suffering, the hardship, the difficulty of our people. We are convinced and that's the reason why we decided to support him. I'm sure our objectivity, that's why Honorable Nabu's law decided to join us. Because we can see the sincerity of this president. You know, when people came with 16 billion, come missing continuous, you hear people who are supposed to be responsible. If you were outside the government, you would have money here, you can't, you with can't. all these negative stuff. Yeah. And, you, and people who knew that when it wasn't was true, some of the people who were even property, the falsification, were people who were involved in killing the economy. They were the same people using some of the very money to buy t shirts, put more out in the street, they gave their names, whether it was Coca Cola bomb or Coco bomb, whatever bomb it was. I'm not associated with bombs because I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, a terrorist. But <laughs> <laughs> the point is, you can't do that to our economy. Look, look at the, the reports. You just to talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll go into that. We'll no, no, time no, the political economy because, yeah, you see, the political economy tells you that governance must be maximized for the social advancement of the people. Beneficial. Simple. Mm -hmm. That's political economy. Mm -hmm. So if you come to power and your policies are not driven in ways that benefit the people, it means you are bad in terms of the political economic situation we're talking about. Indeed, if you just join us, a reminder that you are watching LN TV News Live 30 minutes of all the news Liberia, Africa, and the rest of the world. I'm your uncle Maxwell Johnson. Story stopping at TV News Live this morning. President George Mann and we are trying to speak commitments from the development for development from the United Arab Emirates. Government Library announces the arrival of equipment for the installation of a new Timur River Bridge connecting river sets to three other counties in the southeast. University of Liberia and ECOWAS and ECOBANK Liberia signed an agreement to extend loan to full-time employees of the UL Faculty Association. In other home front, Nigeria's Minister of Education warns that parents who refuse to send their children to school will be prosecuted. Somalia plans to cater for its own security 
needs of how the backing of the AU peacekeeping mission have been hit by striking action by government soldiers. The stories was more. We're taking a break. When we we'll come back, we'll bring you more development. Please keep watching. We're taking a break. We'll be back. In this story. For the first time in Liberia, the West Africa Blue Oceans Conference is currently taking place in the country. The conference, which officially opened on Wednesday, brought together participants from across Liberia and other parts of the world. Zokoi Beslo Kone has been attending activities of the conference and now reports. For the first time ever, Liberia is hosting the Blue Oceans Conference an environmental and marine conference in West Africa representing a historic moment for the country. The conference provides a stage to identify areas of sustainable management of Liberia's ecosystem. It began on Monday, March 18, 2019 and was officially launched on Wednesday, March 20 in Monrovia. Mr. Jesla Mori is Liberia's Minister of Mines and Energy. He spoke at the opening of the conference. We must share best practices and experiences. Most solutions are local, but many have broader relevance. Liberia has a critical role to play, judging from its rich maritime history. We are committed to providing integrated, coordinated support for the implementation of the relevant agreements on the ocean. Also speaking was the Deputy Director General of the National Fisheries and Aquaculture Authority, NAFA, Mr. Augustine Manombala. We need a call to action to muster a collective approach from all sector agencies in mitigating these challenges which might have serious impact on the sustainability of the fishery resources and health of our ocean. For their parts, the head of development cooperation at the Swedish Embassy, Elizabeth Harleman, and the country representative of Conservation International, Jessica Donovan Allen, pledged their organization's support to the Liberian government. Today, there are also a growing number of examples of how unsustainable marine resources use can lead to violations of This is why investments in environmental sustainability, including sustainable marine use, is a prerequisite for poverty reduction. The Blue Action Fund will expand and improve marine protective areas and supporting sustainable livelihoods. The total capital is some uh, 70 million euros, and we will continue to work in different regions of the world. We have also signed an agreement with the World Bank However, Liberia remains extremely vulnerable to climate change. Reporting from Pinsville, my name is Zokwe Beslokone. The University of Liberia and Ecobank Liberia have signed an agreement for the bank to extend loan to full-time employees of the University Faculty Association. Speaking at the signing ceremony Wednesday, the president of the University of Liberia, Dr. Friedrich lauded Ecobank Liberia for its assistance. 
The administration of the fact association took it upon themselves to go and look at alternative ways in which faculty could be helped financially. And the president specifically, uh, Councillor Blanca, uh, made many trips to a variety of banks to look into seeing what could be done. And we started with EcoBank because it's our parent bank. And uh, we're very grateful for your willingness to work with the uh, University Faculty Association and the University of Liberia. We hope that this will be a relationship that only grows and one that's mutually beneficial to the bank and to the university. And I heard one word that I don't want to hear again in this situation, and that is default. Or oh, what was the other one? Uh, I think it was default, right? Default, yes. Yeah, default. In remarks, the managing director of Echo Bank Liberia, George Mensa Asante, said the bank will continue to find innovative ways to promote its business and customer base. We are therefore happy to extend our full banking services to the membership of the University of Liberia Faculty Association. This includes loans, a variety of our digital products, and services as well as other traditional banking facilities to the Alpha members. Under this arrangement, faculty members can apply for personal loan, vehicle loan, and mortgages depending on the individual's debt service ratio. So depending on your salary and how much you can afford to pay as interest, all these are available to those that uh, are eligible. Applicant must first be full-time employees of the university and have no other obligations with any other bank. So if you have other obligation, we can give you the loan to pay that obligation so that everything is through EcoBank. So once again, we are happy to be of service to the university community. We know you play a very important role in the economy of the country. That is why we made a lot of sacrifices to agree and provide you at this very affordable way. Thank you and may God bless us. And over home from now, Nigeria's Minister of Education has warned that parents who refuse to send their children to school will be prosecuted. Adamo, Adamo said criminalizing parents will help reduce the number of children not in education. Many parents complain the lack of money to send their children to school and instead send them onto the streets and into market to hawk items. The BBC said failure in the education system in recent years is due to a lack of government funding. The United Nations Children's Agency UNICEF says Nigeria is one of the world's worst countries for other school children. UNICEF says about 10.5 million of the country's children aged 5 to 14 years are not in school and only 61% of 6 to 11 year olds regularly attend primary school. UNICEF estimates that 60% of Nigerian children not attending school live in the North Arctic country, parts of which have been wrecked by Islamist insurgency. And Somalia's plans to cater for its own security needs without the backing of the African Union peacekeeping mission have been hit by striking action by government soldiers. The protests took place in at least three of their bases located in the critical Shabele region. Residents and the, and the military officer told writers the soldiers are protesting over months of mispay. The Horn of Africa nation's weak central government relies on the support of the military and the African Union mandated Amazon peacekeepers against Al Shabaab. The Prime Minister of Somalia, Hassan Ali Kari, Told government news agency owner soldiers not registered had not been paid. Residents in the middle of Shabali's Bala town, 30 kilometers to the north of Mogadishu, to Reuters that dozens of military vehicles were driven away from the bases. 
Well, on that note, that's how we come to the end of this edition of LNTV News Live. Thanks so much for your video. Thanks to our editors and reporters for making this edition a success. Before we go, a quick recap of stories that may headline this morning. President George Mann and we are at trust big commitments for development from United Arab Emirates. Government Liberia announces the arrival of equipment for the installation of a new Timbu River bridge connecting river sets to three other counties in the southeast. University of Liberia and Echo Bank Liberia signed an agreement to extend loan to full-term full employees of the UL Faculty Association. In other home front, Nigeria's Minister of Education warned that parents who refuse to send their children to school will be prosecuted. For more news, you can log on to www.obcradio.com or better still join us at 12, 2 and 4 for our updates or join tonight at 8 p.m. for our Brampton News, LN TV News Live. I've been your presenter, Maxwell Johnson, bidding you a very good day from Pinsville. All men in Liberia, fathers, grandfathers, uncles, brothers, cousins, and nephews, I want to talk to you today about something that catch my heart, something that is very serious to me. I want to ask all of you, why are we so violent to our women? Why do we keep on beating them? Why do we keep on raping them? The older women, the younger women, the younger girls and even babies, why do we keep abusing them this way? Each and every one of us was brought into this world by a woman. We call that woman mother. Each of us has one. And most of us have grandmothers, sisters, aunts, nieces, and cousins. Are you aware that every woman that you slap or beat or rip is someone's daughter all of you know how much we depend on women first for giving us life and then for caring for us until we are able to take care of ourselves yet every single day somewhere and everywhere in Liberia some man is abusing a woman in a shameful way and so today stop raping our girls stop insulting them and stop taking advantage of them harassing them in your homes our schools and our communities instead i want you to respect our women and protect them report any incidents